morning and praise Jesus. I'm well and born again this morning and glad to see each one of you uh, coming in the house of the Lord. David said it's better to be found in the house of the Lord than in a thousand other places. And I also want to take this opportunity uh, for the opportunity that I have received uh, 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 from Bishop and Mom for using this, uh, be given, given an opportunity to share the word of God and for that I do not take for granted. And also I'm glad to see you Bishop and Mom. we have missed you and uh, I, I, I thank God for everything. So uh, I'm a son in this house so I'm not new but uh, I know that uh, I usually do not come to this service, I've been going to that service and now we're in the second service and uh, we thank God and God is doing great, great things. So I also have not been in this service for quite some time, but I know that we are going to move together even as the Lord ministers to us. So uh, let's pray. Our Father and our God in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you and I want to glorify you because you are God and there is none like you. Lord, this morning, even as we gather, Lord, we gather, Lord, in your name. And Lord, it's our desire that, Lord, you continue to take the center stage. That, Lord, you continue to have preeminence, Lord, in our lives. And Lord, even as we sit down, Lord, even to hear your word, Lord, I pray that King of Glory, that none of us will live the way we came King of Glory, but Lord, you minister to each one of us King of Glory in a very special way. Because Lord, your word is living, it's powerful and refreshing. Cause it to refresh us this day. All to the honor and to the praise, Lord, of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, so today I would like to share a word. Uh, uh, the entitled Building Our Lives on the Secure Solid Foundation. Building Our Lives on the Secure Solid Foundation. And uh, I have been sitting and thinking, looking back at my life, and uh, I, I, I looked and saw that, yes, I, have, I, have, I, came from, I have come from a Christian uh, family. As long as I can remember, I knew my mom when she was born again, and she's still born again. And later, my dad uh, gave his life to, uh, to Christ and, uh, in 1981. And uh, we could be able to go to church. Uh, mom could ensure that we go to church each and every day. And also, there were fellowships that were coming into our, into our home, just as we have cell groups. And even my own grandmother, there were, there were fellowships that were coming at her place. And we could hear the word of God. The word of God could be preached. And uh, I knew it was right. I could hear altar calls being, uh, be, uh, 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 being called out. But had not, uh, I did not make the step of knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. But inside myself, I knew it was the right thing to do. But I was hesitant. It's like I, I, I thought that because my parents are born again, uh, my grandmother is, is, is born again, that uh, everything was okay. Until it reached somewhere where I made the bold step of receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life, that things took a different turn. Because receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, making Jesus that you are solid, uh, uh, your solid foundation, is a personal decision. You may even be here as a couple, but it is a personal decision. So it's good that we, uh, we uh, so, so that brought a turnaround in my life. And uh, today I'm the person I am because of applying the truth that I knew. I knew the truth because the word of God is the truth, uh, the, the word of God is full of the truth, uh, truth that are in the word of God. But when I applied, there was a shift. Things changed because I applied that word. And today I continue to apply that word that's why I'm the person I am today by the grace of God. Here in Kenya, uh, we, have seen, uh, uh, we have seen the risk of buildings collapsing. A lot of buildings co collapsing and others sinking. And here in Zimmerman, there, was a, there is a house which was known in a, in a Teremuka Parachini. And even one time in Nigashia, there was a, a house which was sinking. And the, the main problem that has been there is the problem of faulty foundations. And the question we all need to pose to ourselves uh, is this. Is my life built on a secure, 
solid foundation. So it's a personal question. Is my life built on a secure, solid foundation? And I would like we look at the scripture in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27, in the new, I prefer the New Living Translation, and I know that God is going to minister to us. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Okay, as it comes, the word of God says, uh, this is Jesus who was speaking, and says, anyone, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it uh, is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Verse 25. Though the rain come in torrents and uh, flood waters rise and the weeds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on the bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and, and, does, uh, and doesn't obey it, obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come, and the weeds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So, that's what the word of God uh, is, is, is reminding us. So, concluding his teachings on values of, of kingdom living, which is uh, known as uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. That's what we have seen in verse 24. The fears we wind brew, but the house survived. In contrast, the person who hears and yet doesn't obey is like a foolish man who built his house on a sand, as we saw in verse 26. The fears winds brew, and the house collapses under the intensity of the storms. So Jesus presented two options. You can either build, we can, we can build our lives on the solid foundation of obedience to, uh, to him and on, or on, the st on unstable sand of our own ways. So we can make a choice. Whether we are going to allow him to read us through his word or we are going to read ourselves in our own way or the knowledge that we have. Again, Jesus spoke from Luke, Luke 6, 46 to 49. Luke 6, 46 to 49. But, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not, uh, uh, do not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I'll show, I'll show you whom he is. Like, he's a, a man, uh, he's like a man building a house who dug deep, uh, deep and laid down the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat, Vemonetary against that house and could, uh, could, not, sh uh, could not shake it, uh, could not shake it, to, yeah, uh, could not shake it, uh, okay, could not shake it, <laughs> uh, sa, sa, for it was founded on the rock. Proceed, sorry for that. But he who had and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat and immediately fell, and the reign of that house was great. So Jesus, in these two areas, is reminding us that we need to put our, 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 our lives in the right foundation. And I like what is in verse 28 of that, 48 that of, of that scripture that we have, we, have, uh, we have said. It says, it stands firm because it is well built. So you can build your life well, or you can uh, build it otherwise. So, uh, by the grace of God, I have been involved in a few constructions. And uh, one of the things that is usually very key when one is building is ensuring that the foundation is right. For example, these tall buildings we see in Nairobi, so for them to be able to go to those high heights, the foundation is always very key. So that they can be able to, uh, because foundation is able to hold everything else that is going to be built. So, so it's important we always look at the foundations of our life. There is much wisdom offered to us in this world, plus lots of advice and help, and much of it is good and beneficial. If we base our life on any foundation other than the humble obedience to God's truth, however, we, we will invite trouble. 
But in his strength, doing what God says is the only way to have a house arrive built on the rock. The question as I, as I began is, uh, is, a, is, is, a, is your life, because we need to ask ourselves, is my life built on the secure, solid foundation? And uh, very quickly, we are going to look at three points, and I know that God is going to minister to us. And uh, so we are trying to answer this question, what is needed, what is needed to build our lives on the secure, solid foundation? What is needed to build our lives on the secure, solid foundation? And the first point is reason, reason. Always be attentive, as, uh, we, we, we need to be attentive as we hear the word of God. So we need to be very deliberate. You see, you can hear, but you are distracted. But when you listen, it means that you are attentive to what, uh, uh, to, to what you, are, uh, you are hearing. Even, so we need to be purposeful, even as we interact with the word of God. When we listen to the words of Jesus and obey them, we are building our lives on a steady, rock-solid foundation. We need to be intentional in listening to the word of God. And maybe we may ask ourselves, why do we need to be intentional? Because the word of God can be able to transform us. So the scripture says that, uh, reckon the word of God uh, to, to a fire. And also reckon it to a hammer that breaks rock into pieces. And, uh, and Jesus in John 8.32, John 8.32 said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you, uh, uh, will make you free. And in Romans 10, verse 17, the scripture says that, So then, faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. Not just hearing, but hearing the word of God. Therefore, for you and me, coming to church, or setting time to interact with the word of God, is never in vain. It's never in vain, when you sit there and listen to the word of God. As I told you, as I, I, as I fellowships came to our home, as I went to church, the, uh, uh, that word could minister to me. It's only that my heart, uh, my heart was hard, but it was ministering to me. And even there are some things that I could not do because I knew what the word of God was telling me. But I needed to do the, the basic thing. I needed to, uh, to have the right foundation. To make Jesus the, uh, the, the solid foundation in my life. You cannot claim the treasures. And when you talk about treasures, we are talking about God's promises. That they, you don't know they exist. For example, even when you are praying, you cannot claim a promise. You cannot stand on a promise when you do not know that that promise is there. And one time I remember I was passing through uh, a hard time. And I remember my mom speaking to me. And uh, quoting Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. And I usually write it in NIV. And uh, the word of God says that, Dear friends, you should not forget this. With God, a thousand years are like one day, and one day is like a thousand years. And that word, even today, it ministers to me. Even when I'm passing through storms of life, because that word is in me, uh, I'm able to always remind myself. So it's important that when we listen to the word of God, the word of God is able to transform us. So even today as you came, so you're not just hearing a lecture or anything, you're listening to the word of God. This word is able to change and to transform you to the glory of God. So the first thing is to listen. <clears throat> the second point uh, is for us, for us or obeys. For us, and it's not for us, it's for us because it's supposed to be in continuous tense. So we need to uh, for us. So the first point was reason. The second one is for us. And we are, we are using for us uh, to, uh, because it's supposed to be in continuous tense. We need to always make a choice to build our eyes on Jesus and obedience to his teaching or the word of God. So we are building our eyes on Jesus and he continue to be obedience to his word. So even when we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives, yes, you, it happens one day. But you are supposed to remain connected to him. Because uh, we begin with faith, we are supposed to continue with faith, we are, con we are supposed to end uh, with faith. So, 
we need to make a choice to build our lives on Jesus and obedience to his teaching. Jesus used the image of building a home atop a faulty foundation to explain the far riskier danger of building our lives on unsteady, or unsteady ground. So even for us, so that can be the case if we are not building our lives in the right foundation. He explains how some of us construct our lives on solid rock, ensuring that we hold solid when we face fierce storms. On the other hand, some of us, however, erect our lives on sand, and when the fierce storm rage, our lives collapse with a great crash. So today we have a choice. Uh, uh, because we see that one distinction between the building on an unshakable or secure foundation and a crumbling one is whether or not we put Christ's words into practice. And that's what we saw from Matthew chapter 7 verse 26. So the difference is are you putting into practice the truth that you have learned from the word of God? And again, uh, 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 Apostle James in uh, James chapter 1 verse 25 to 20, uh, 22 to 25 also reminds us why we need to put the word of God into practice. And the word of God says, but uh, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, we are only fooling, we, we are only fooling ourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like gracing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forgot what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect row that sets, uh, sets you free, the perfect row that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you, what you had, then God will bless you for doing it. So here we have been told what we need to do, because God is going to bless us. As we hear the word of God, and we obey that word of God, God is, is going to bless us in, in, what, uh, in what we do. One at Kuzwe. So the question isn't whether or not we hear his words. It's important to hear his words. But the question is not whether or not we hear his words. But whether we practice them as he enables us. So remember, we cannot practice it, but, uh, but we can only practice it when he's, he enables us. And that's when we allow him to be shepherd of our lives. That's why we allow the Holy Spirit of God to come into our lives to continue to be our teacher and to guide us. We must individually make a choice to build our lives on Jesus and obedience to his words or disobedience to his instruction. By the help of the Holy Spirit, we can choose to build our lives on Christ. And I remember when I, become, I became born again, uh, I was continuing well, but there were some temptations which were coming, and those were coming through music. Uh, before I was born again, I liked the reggae music. And I could, go, I could get into the matatu when going home, and the songs could be sung. And I remember I could find myself tapping, a mugu in a tap, the sayos in meokoka. But I remember because I was going, when I was in college, I was going to AIC, in church in AIC Bomani. I remember they liked to sing a song, these hymns. And there was this hymn that is called More About Jesus. And uh, how I was able to overcome that is that even when there was that noise which was coming, I could, uh, I could be able to sing that song in my heart and I was able to overcome that. And that song says that more, more, more. More about Jesus, more, more about Jesus. It says, Spirit of God, my teacher, be showing the things of Christ to me. Yeah, so yeah, that, that bit, uh, yes, I know the, the, the song, but, because, but that, 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 that bit, that more about Jesus, that Spirit of God, my teacher, be. Showing the things of Christ to me. So he's able to show you the, the word of God. When you obey the word of God. And the Holy Spirit is able to read and guide you. So that uh, you are able to move, to move on well. And even John uh, uh, said, uh, desired that he may decrease as Jesus increased. Even for us, let's desire that he's going to increase in our lives. Even as we continue to decrease. Praise the name of Jesus. And the third point. 
is storms. 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 Here, we, 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 uh, when we choose to honor God with our lives, we remain, st we remain steady in storms of life. So when we choose to honor God with our lives, we remain st steady in storms of life. And that's what we saw from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 25. So, and one thing we need to know is that storms, or the other words for storms, is adverse seasons or adverse uh, uh, situations. We need to know uh, about them. Is that one of the things about them is that they are inevitable. They are inevitable. The other thing is that they are impartial. See, it is nafanyiki watu wengine, na asifanyiki wengine. The other thing is that they are unpredictable. Kwa sababu sidhani kama kuna mtu angetaka kuingia kwa mambo mambo mangumu but storms of life they are uh, uh, they are inevitable they are impartial and they are in, unpredictable but uh, 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 the other thing about them is that they are seasonal and the good thing about our god is that wisdom and power belongs to him he changes times and seasons but even as you go through the storms are you alone is your, life, is, is your life well grounded? We saw in Matthew, uh, in Matthew uh, ch uh, ch uh, chapter 7 verse 27 that when the rains and floods come and the weeds beat against the house uh, um, and then we saw in, uh, th in that uh, uh, in the book of Luke uh, verse 49 when the floods sweep down against that house it will collapse into a heap of rains. So see the word that is being used. The word, the word that is used is that when the when it's when not if but the word that is used is when when, when that happens and in fact even jesus in john 16 verse 33 say, say, uh, to, to the disciples these things that i have spoken to you that uh, uh, these things i have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have many have tribulation but be of good cheer cheer i have overcome the world and in fact, uh, also in Isaiah 43, uh, verse 2, it says that when you pass, the word is when, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will you'll not be burnt. The flames will not set you abreast. So the word is when, not if. But the good thing is that when we are grounded in, G, or in, in uh, we have grounded our lives in, in Jesus, the solid rock, then we will not be shaken because he is assuring us that even when we pass through the waters, he will be with us. When we pass through the rivers, they will not sweep us because he will again be with us. So it's important who is, who, who is on your side. Uh, and even when you are passing through hard times, when you have the word of God with us, the word of God is able to carry us. And I remember... During the time of COVID, and the things were very tough, I remember Bishop ministering to us from Psalms 121. Where does my help come from? And uh, I remember him uh, telling us about three things. That even during that difficult time, that uh, uh, he was assuring us that God was going to preserve us. God was going uh, to protect us. God was going to provide for us. So, and those words, like, uh, they carried us. Uh, and mean and blesses us with his peace. Mm. So because even in the, in the storms, when, when he's on your side, he's able to bless you uh, with his peace. And that's what he, the scripture says in Psalms 29, uh, verse 11, that he strengthens his people and he blesses them with his peace. And finally, in Psalms 18, verse 20, 28 to 29, in the NIV, this is David uh, who was saying that, you, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale over a wall. So here he was saying, yes, he knew that, yes, that with his help, that he could advance against a troop. But he was saying, with you, my God, I can scale over a wall. I don't know which, st which storm you are in, but with his help, you are able to advance. Uh, with him, we are able to scale over even that storm to the glory of God. And remember that wisdom and power belongs to him. He changes times and seasons. 
And as I conclude, we have seen we need to do three, three things. The first thing we need to be attentive as we hear Jesus' teachings of the word of God. We need to be attentive as we, uh, we hear Jesus' teaching of the word of God. That is reason. And the other thing we need to make a choice to build our lives on Jesus and obedience to his teachings. That is, you know, we, we continually follow uh, his word or obey his words. And the third thing we have seen, we need to always honor God with our lives to remain steady in the storms of life. So, storms come to everyone. But how people respond, people respond differently. And uh, for example, we, we, we know about the 12 spies. Uh, all the 12 spies saw the same thing. They even came with the evidence of the fruits. But their reports were different. Why were they different? It's because the 10 just saw their strength. They saw on their own, they saw giants. And they saw they could not be able to make it. But the good thing about Caleb and Joshua is that they included God in the picture. They knew that they are not going on their own, uh, on their own but they knew that with God, they could be able to go and, uh, and, overcome, uh, and overcome. Even for us, when storms of life come, so let's, uh, let's uh, be grounded on G in Jesus, and that will make the difference in our lives, because even when storms come, we will not be shaken, because we know that we are not alone. <clears throat> When, when, we, when we purchase something of great value, for example, a house, you are usually required to put down a deposit to indicate uh, our, uh, how sincere we are and to promise our intentions are serious. That deposit is, in, is, is a form of insura, insurance, a guarantee that adds substance to our word. So, uh, that when you are buying something of value for you or maybe it's that land or that house for you to be seen that you are a serious buyer you are supposed to put a deposit and that deposit we can look uh, a deposit to indicate you are, how sincere you are and it's a, a promise uh, a promise that your intentions are serious you are a serious buyer that deposit is a form of insurance a guarantee that adds substance to uh, to your word God has made some incredible, uh, incredible promises to us. Promises that stagger our imaginations. Sometimes you hear the word of God and you, you, you ask yourself, is this, is this true? He has promised that we, uh, we can have a relationship with him through his son. That's what he has promised, that we can have a relationship with him uh, through his son. He has promised never to leave us, nor forsake us, and to be with us always. In fact, the Bible is full of, of God's promises. Someone might ask, what insurance do we have that God is serious? Maybe that's what you're asking. What insurance do we have that God is serious? Yes, the word of God is full of promises. How do we know that his promises can be trusted? But this is the, this is the point. God's deposit is the most precious investment anyone could make. God's deposit is the most precious investment anyone could make. And that is his son. Who by his death and resurrection purchased our salvation. And not only is Jesus Christ a sufficient down payment on God's promises, but he is also, in fact, payment in full. That Jesus is not just a deposit, but his payment in full. That today... If, if, you are connect, if, 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 if you are you are able to agree or, uh, to, uh, to have faith and, and accept what happened on, on the cross, that at the cross it was not the point of death, but it was a point of victory, where Jesus said it's finished, and he overcame death and the work of the evil one. And you say yes to Jesus, it, he'll not just be, a, he was not, Jesus at the cross was not just a down payment, but he became a full, a, 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 a full payment. And that's why when you receive him, you can confess and declare that you are the righteous of God. Not because of anything you have done, but because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. So, and for each one of us, it's an invitation for us. Uh, that for, so, for, for, for God so loved the world, that whosoever, whosoever, we are, in that, we are all that in that, believes in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. 
So, Jesus was payment in full. We have a guarantee that when we are connected with him, promises that, there are, that are in the word of God, we can claim them confidently. So, Rife's uh, success roadmap, uh, 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 so, some of people, people ask, what is the roadmap for success? And um, people give different things. But let's know that Rife's success roadmap is tied to having a relationship with, with, with God through his son. And that's only when we make Jesus, uh, uh, we make Jesus the secure, solid uh, rock of our lives. And we do that by receiving him as Lord and Savior of our lives. Only what is built on the solid foundation of, of Christ will, will rust. And it's important that we know that Jesus saves, Jesus uh, sustains, Jesus satisfies. That's about, our, uh, that, that's about Jesus. That he saves, he sustains, and he satisfies. I'm a witness and many here are our witnesses that he does that. And even where you are this morning, you can give your life to Jesus. Because we are witnesses that he saves, uh, he sustains, and he satisfies. So, and he can, uh, you can make him uh, the, sor the solid foundation. Because he, rem he remains the Lord. And maybe from this day, you can, move, you, can, you can live here confessing that yes, he's my Lord, he's my rock, he's my redeemer. So that invitation is there, and you can say yes to Jesus. And I don't know if you, are, if you are there, maybe, and you'd like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. He can bring a turn around. As I gave that testimony, yes, I come from that Christian family, uh, and I thought that yes, I, I'm good. But later it dawned on me that I needed to have a personal relationship with Jesus. So you can make that, uh, 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 that, that personal decision. Are you there? Are you there? So even as you continue, Rita, you, you will come and you, and you can be able to give. As I conclude, Psalms 40 verse 1 and 2, Psalms 40 verse 1 and 2, Jesus said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the streamy pit, out of the mud and mire, and he set my foot on the rock. Here, David said that he waited patiently for God to act. He did not wait for man, but he waited for God. And sometimes that's hard for us to do. But in time, God did answer. And he lifted David out of uh, the, the, that, uh, that muddy, muddy rock and put his feet on the rock. So this is a picture of what happens when we give our lives to Jesus. So he's able to, uh, to, to put us so that we are able to be well grounded from that, uh, that, that, that foundation, that, that, like the way David was removed, from that uh, muddy pit, and he was placed on a, on a rock. Here alone is the solid and shakeable rock on which to build our lives. If you are in a pit right now, don't give up. Instead, turn to Christ and find in him the solid foundation that you need. It may be not maybe uh, the issue, uh, it, it may not be the issue of um, salvation, but maybe any other, uh, you, are, you, you are in a storm or in a situation, but you can depend on Jesus.